Your father is alive. Go to Sparta. Talk to Menelaus, Helen, and Nestor, and find out where your father is. Two, Athena will uh, say to Zeus, it's time for Odysseus to be returned home. He is living on an island with a beautiful goddess, uh, Cenef, uh, named Calypso. Send Hermes to tell Calypso, it's time for Odysseus to be returned home. And then finally, three, Hermes does exactly that. He goes to Calypso and he says to Odysseus, it's time. Now we're to the island of Calypso. On Calypso's island, well, we got some interesting stuff happening simultaneously. Odysseus has been there for seven years, shipwrecked on an island with a drop-dead gorgeous goddess, Calypso. By day, Odysseus sits out on a rock and looks towards Ithaca and says, Oh! If only I was home with my beautiful wife Penelope. Oh, if only I was home with my young son Telemachus. At night, Calypso steps out of the cave and says, Odysseus, into the cave goes Odysseus where he will spend the night. The next morning, back out to the rock he goes. Oh, if only I could be with my wife. Pen oh, if only I could be with my son. As the sun goes down, Calypso steps out of the cave. Odie, baby. <laughs> into the cave he goes. We've been doing this for seven years, okay? Now, we should point out that for Odysseus, he is offered the opportunity to stay with Calypso and become immortal. And he says, no. He says, I would rather be home with my wife, Penelope, even though she is mortal and she's going to get old and she's, I still would want to be with my wife instead of with a drop-dead gorgeous goddess. It's an interesting story. Meanwhile, on Sparta, Telemachus has arrived. Menelaus and Helen will both say about the young man, you look like your father, Odysseus. And Telemachus will say, people tell me he's my dad, but I've never met the man. Where is he? And it will be Menelaus who says, I, you know, I have no idea. My guess is he's dead now. I, last I heard he was on some island with this drop-dead gorgeous goddess Calypso, but I'm sure he's probably dead by now. Telemachus will then be sent back home believing that probably his father is not alive. Meanwhile, Odysseus is going to be made a raft by Calypso and sent off to sea. And he, for 17 on to 18 days, he's doing fine and he's sailing towards Ithaca and he thinks he can even see Ithaca when all of a sudden Poseidon realizes that Odysseus is there on the water and Poseidon tries to drown Odysseus. It is only Ino a sea nymph, who is able to give Odysseus this special veil which allows for him to finally be saved. He washes up on a beach, naked, and he crawls up inside of some uh, foliage there, and he goes to sleep. He is on the island of the Phaeacians, where there is a great king, Alcyonus, and a beautiful young princess named Narcissa. Narcissa is visited in a dream by Athena and told, Tomorrow, go out to the ocean, have a bit of fun, and whatever happens, don't worry. Narcissa and her girlfriends go to the ocean. They go down to the beach and they're playing. They're having a good time. Odysseus awakens, sees the beautiful women, thinks he must be in Olympus, and that the most beautiful of the women is Aphrodite. He knows Aphrodite, of course, is mad at him because Aphrodite was on the Trojan side. And so Odysseus runs down the beach begging for forgiveness from who he thinks is Aphrodite. All of the girls run away because Odysseus has no clothes on. It's, of course, Narcissa who will realize from her dream something important is happening. She is not afraid. And when Odysseus finally falls down at her feet and asks for help, she says, I think I found my husband and I'll take you to my father. It will be there that evening while he's having a meal in the king's uh, you know, castle that the prophet poet is brought in, the bard, to sing songs about the fall of Troy and the great heroes who fought there, Achilles and Odysseus and Ajax. And during the song, Odysseus starts to cry. And Alcyonus says, what's going on? Who are you? And Odysseus then will confide, 
I'm the great Odysseus who fought at the walls of Troy. And Alcyone is like, no way! That was 10 years ago. Dude, what have you been doing for 10 years? It's now in the center of the Odyssey that we get a flashback where Odysseus is going to tell us about all of his adventures. These adventures, of course, are the most famous part of the Odyssey. Odysseus says, dude, you got no idea. It was insane. After we left the walls of Troy, I thought we were headed home. No good. No good. We had all kinds of adventures. Adventures? Adventures like what? Odysseus starts to tell of the adventures. Let's go through them quickly. We won't spend a lot of time with them. Again, we've given these lectures elsewhere so that you can play that game in more detail. First, he says we go to the land of the Lotus Eaters. If you eat that stuff, it's dope. It takes away your memory, and you'll never want to leave. So we had to make sure that we didn't, that we didn't do that one, right? Then we went to the island of the Cyclopses, and we had that engagement with Polyphemus, that Cyclops that tried to eat us, and we blinded him. The only problem is, for your notes, Polyphemus has a daddy. His daddy is Poseidon. And this is why Poseidon wanted to kill Odysseus. Then he says we went to King Alios, the king of the winds, and the king put all of the winds in a bag so that we could get home. I got all the way to the shores of Ithaca, but I was so tired I went to sleep. My men thought that in my bag was gold. They wanted the gold. They opened the bag. The winds come out, and we were blown off course. Ugh, we were blown. Next, he says to the land of the Leostigians, these giants that actually destroyed all of our ships, but the one that Odysseus says me and my men were in. They then end up at Aeas. Uh, this is the land of Circe the witch. Of course, this is a famous story. Circe the witch will invite Odysseus's men, search party, Odysseus not there, he's back at the ship, invite Odysseus's men in, give them something to eat, and when they eat the meat, they turn into pigs. Odysseus hears about this from one guy who didn't go in. Odysseus is mad. He's going to go kill Circe. Hermes says, no, 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 no. You need magic. Here's what you do. You use my magic, and then when Circe feeds you this food, you're not going to turn into a, uh, a, a pig, and she'll immediately think you're a god, and she'll do whatever you want. This is exactly what happens. And for two years, they say at the island of Circe, and yet it's time finally to leave. And Circe says, the only way you're getting home is to go to Hades. Nobody wants to go to Hades, but Odysseus says, all right, fine, we go to Hades. It's there in Hades, in the journey to the underworld, right, that he meets Tiresias, the blind prophet. And the blind prophet Tiresias will tell Odysseus, you got serious problems going home. You'll get home. But when you get home, you'll have your greatest challenge yet. Of course, those suitors are there waiting for him, right? From there, he passes the island of the Cyrenes, these beautiful women who sing songs that will attract the boat to the rocks and then crash and then everyone dies. Odysseus tells his men to put wax in their ears. He makes his men tie him to the mast of the ship and he says, no matter how much I scream, don't take the wax out of your ears. Odysseus is the one man who's been able to hear the song of the Cyrenes and live to tell about it, the most beautiful song in the world. Next, Scylla and Charybdis, this really scary kind of two monsters side by side, and he has to sail in between the two of them. Six of his crew die in that experience. And then finally, he ends up on the island of Apollo's sacred cows. Now, Tiresias has told Odysseus, if you end up on this island, whatever you do, do not kill the cows and do not eat them. Odysseus arrives. He tells his sailor men, Whatever you do, don't eat the men, don't eat the cows. I'm going to go off for a while and go make some prayers to the gods, so that way we get home safe. When he comes back over the hill, he smells Big Macs. They have killed the cows, and they are eating the cows. This would turn us all into vegetarians. As they get ready to eat into the meat, their burger starts to wiggle and move. The meat comes alive and begins to move. The men immediately realize that they are jacked. They run down to the ship. The ship is sunk. And everyone, Odysseus says, all of my men drowned except for me. I was washed up onto the island of Calypso, and there I have lived for a number of years. He asks to be returned back to Ithaca, and the Phaeacians, in fact, will oblige him. 
The final part of our story of Odysseus is, of course, when he arrives in Ithaca. Let's tell several of these different parts of the story. When he arrives, he is told by Athena to not go home because there are serious bad guys waiting for him at home. If he goes home, he'll be killed. Instead, he goes to Emmaus, the swine herd, and it's there, along with the reuniting of, him, uh, of Odysseus with his son Telemachus, they make a plan. Their plan is for Odysseus to be disguised as an old man. He will then be allowed to get inside the walls of his palace home, Ithaca, and once inside, there will be able then to be the jack of all jacks. Let's go ahead and point out in some similarities, though. Remember, it was Odysseus who had the plan for the Trojan horse, yes? Remember, it's Odysseus who disguises himself now as an old man to be able to get inside. If he goes in looking like the normal Odysseus, they'll recognize him, they'll kill him. We have an interesting story. All dog lovers know this story. This is the story of Argos. Odysseus is, dis is, uh, is disguised by Athena as an old, old man, wrinkled, long hair, walking with a limp. As he comes to the palace doors, laying on the ground is Odysseus' old dog, Argus, who's been waiting for 20 years for his master's return. And when the dog smells, Odysseus, he immediately knows it's his master. And he jumps up and starts wagging his old tail and walking towards Odysseus. And Odysseus immediately realizes, oh no, Argus is going to give it away that I'm Odysseus. And he yells at the dog. He says, get away from me. And Argus drops his little tail and walks over to the wall and lays down and dies of a broken heart. A dog's a, a human's best friend. You've heard that saying. This is a famous story. I just point this out because this is one story out of a thousand stories from this Troy tale, which has all kinds of beautiful implications. Inside of the walls of Troy, uh, inside of the walls of Ithaca and the palace, Odysseus, Telemachus now will go. We have an interesting moment here. Um, Euryclea, the a uh, servant who actually took care of Odysseus from the time he was a young boy. She gives him a bath and she recognizes a scar on his foot. And the minute she sees the scar, she knows it's Odysseus. And Odysseus grabs her by the throat and he says, don't tell anybody what we're about to do. And of course, she's very excited that finally Odysseus is back because these suitors have been disgusting. Penelope has had enough. She's decided it's time to marry again. Odysseus must be dead. She's told by her son Telemachus, who has come back from Sparta, Dad is dead. It's time for you to remarry. She has a contest to decide who she will marry. She says two things. The man I marry has got to be a strong warrior like my husband Odysseus was. That means I'm going to have a shooting contest. You're going to have to string this bow of Odysseus. Now for those of us who hunt with bows, we know today that most people hunt with what's called compound bows. Yes, they are strung all the time. But a recurve bow, those of us who hunt with recurve bows know this one, you actually have to string the bow. It's just a piece of stick. You have to bend the stick, put the string at the top of the stick, right, and then you can shoot. She says, I need somebody who can string my husband's bow. That's the first test. The second is, I'm going to line up 12 axes that will have these rings. Whoever will, I will marry has to be able to shoot through all 12 of those rings after you've strung the bow. Every one of the men try. None of them can even string the bow. The leader of the bad guys says, well, I guess we got to find another contest. And Telemachus says, wait a minute, I haven't tried. You, you're the son. What are you talking about? He says, hey, if I can string the bow, I can throw all you guys out of here. Telemachus, the son of Odysseus, tries to string the bow. He can't. And all the bad guys do one of these, and I was like, Phew. Dodge that bullet. Well, I guess we got to come up with a new contest. Wait a minute, Telemachus. What about the old man in the back? We haven't given him a shot. The old man in the back, he can barely stand up. What are you talking about? Him? No, nope, he's got to have a shot too. Telemachus brings his father the bow. And of course, with every step, Odysseus is like, oh, this is time for business. When he touches that bow, Athena will give him the strength of a great warrior. He strings the bow sitting down, shoots the arrow through all 12 axe heads, and all of the bad guys collectively go, uh-oh, because they realize something's up. Odysseus tells his son Telemachus, now is the time for us to purge the house. And they kill all the bad guys. Gone. Two are found. 
Fascinating story. Two are found. They've been hiding. Both of them brought up in front of Odysseus. He's holding this huge sword covered in blood and guts because he's been jacking guys. And he goes, you, what do you do? And the guy goes, me, I'm a priest. <laughs> Chops off his head. I don't know, maybe they made Odysseus go to church one too many times. Priest dead. He asks the next guy, who are you? What do you do? He goes, me, I'm a poet. And he goes, I'll let you live as long as you promise to tell the story. And of course, there's always been this tradition that that actually was Homer, and that Homer, of course, is the one who then will make up the story to tell the story. In other lectures, we've obviously pointed out nobody knows who Homer actually was, and in fact, there probably were a number of Homers, right? Not just one, to put together all of these different stories. Meanwhile, Athena has put Penelope in a sleep upstairs, and she's been told, Penelope, do not come out no matter what you hear in the rest of the house. Penelope is told, you're never going to believe this, but your husband is downstairs. Penelope does not believe it. And in fact, when she comes face to face with Odysseus, she needs to know for sure it is Odysseus. She says, how do I know that you're really my guy? And Odysseus says, what are you talking about? I built this castle. And she goes, any guy can say that. And she goes, yeah, um, wh what else can you tell me about this house? And Odysseus says, well, I'll tell you one thing. I built this entire castle around this huge tree. In the center of the castle is our bedroom. Around the tree is our bed. It's a large circular bed. Nobody could know that except for me. Am I right or am I right? And Penelope says, oh, my husband, you've returned. What have you been doing? And immediately he says, oh, you're not even going to believe the stuff I've been doing. All kinds of crazy. I ended up on Calypso's Island for a couple of years. I was making uh, all kinds of fun with her. I was with the beautiful Circe, a witch. I was with her. Hey, you haven't messed around on me, have you? Penelope, no. I would never miss. Good, because if you did, I'd kill you. Let's put it in our notes. This is, of course, that instantiation of the, of the sexual double standard. Guys can mess around. Odysseus can mess around. It's okay. Penelope, the expectation is she messes around. She gets dead. That notion, there's, there's certain kinds of rules that apply to guys that don't apply to girls. We will, of course, have seen this all the way through this story of the Troy tale. Finally, Odysseus has killed a lot of the young men of Ithaca. And so there's a final battle. We could call it a, a potential civil war on the, on, on the island of Ithaca. Um, and they're about to fight when out of the sky will speak the voice of the gods. No more fighting. And the Odyssey will end there. Let's say two things really quickly about that. One, at the very conclusion of the Odyssey, we have no death narrative for Odysseus. This is huge for your notes. No death narrative for, for Odysseus. We never know how Odysseus dies. Achilles, we know how he dies. Hector, we know how he dies. Agamemnon, I told you, Clytemnestra jacked him with an axe. And on and on. We have death narratives for most of the heroes. We do not have a death narrative for Odysseus. The Greeks, it's almost like they love this hero so much that they couldn't imagine that he would ever get old and die. So they just couldn't have a, a death narrative. However, lots and lots of writers, point number two, have, will speculate about the death of Odysseus. Of course, several are famous in Dante's Divine Comedy, as we've given in other lectures. In that first called Inferno, when Dante the Pilgrim is traveling through Inferno, he, of course, will find there Odysseus. But maybe the most famous treatment is the famous treatment of Alfred Lord Tennyson, the great British Victorian poet, who will write a famous poem Ulysses, which is the Latin name for Odysseus. And in that poem, we will have the ancient Odysseus who will decide to take one last journey. We've, of course, given full lecture on uh, the poem Ulysses, and you can find it on Learn Strong as well. All right, let's jump now to level two and three for the story of Odysseus, right? At 2A, the key here for our message, the key is the, is the journey. Far more than the destination. Think about this. The idea is life is like a journey, yes? where all of these adventures happen. Far more than the destination is the journey. At 2B, well, the conflict here. Let's point this out. Again, two different kinds of heroes. Odysseus is much more like a thesis kind of character, right? Thesis, we'll remember, we said, is this kind of hero that's a thinker. Achilles is more of a Herculean kind of character, right? He is all about brawn and strength. And so you have this interesting tension that goes on. For example, I'll give you a classic example. Odysseus on the island of Ithaca finally returns there and he sees this old man walking down the beach and the old man walks up to him and says, who are you and where are you from? And immediately 
Odysseus spins a whole story. Oh, man, you're not going to believe where I've been. I've been to this island, Crete, and while I was there, I got into this war and this fight, and I almost ended up getting killed. And, and in the middle of his story, the old man transforms into Athena, and she's the goddess. And she starts laughing, and she says, you are something else, the way you can spin a lie. How can you do that so well? Odysseus is the great liar. Achilles hates lying. Of all kinds. He goes right to the heart of the matter. So we have two different kinds of heroes, which obviously begs the question, which one of these two types of heroes do you like the best? At 3A, comparison to other texts, well, we've already mentioned several. Obviously, the Odyssey comes to mind as well. Um, I like to challenge you to think about this story of, of the Odyssey and the story of Odysseus as it relates to really popular films. For example, the Star Wars trilogy and the Star Wars films come to mind. Um, you can think of your own as well. All of the different kinds of homecoming stories, right? What is your favorite homecoming story? You can jot that one down in 3A. What is for you your favorite game where at the very end of the game, it's all about a homecoming and they lived ha ha happily ever after kind of thing. Finally, at 3B, how about this one? It's an interesting question. What was a time when you had to wait a long time to get what you wanted, right? You had, to go, you had to go through a lot to get what you wanted. Some students will say, this is the story of high school. Lots of trials, lots of challenges, lots of adventures, and finally, graduation. It takes a long time to get the thing we want, right? You'll remember maybe those final lines from Longfellow's Psalm of Life. Let us then be up and doing with a heart for any faith, still achieving, still pursuing, learn to labor, and of course to wait, right? Is that my story? All right, let's turn now quickly to our final chapter. This is chapter 16, The Adventures of Aeneas, it will be called, right? And I've already given full lectures on, on the Aeneid. Again, all, all three of these epic poems in full of, in my Harvard Classics section. Have, having done that, though, I'd like to turn just briefly to uh, a comment of, of, of Edith Hamilton.